Sir, the clinic isn't open yet. Morning, Dave. Dr. Graham. Yeah, Madam, bright and early this morning. Well, I had a few things to do before the day starts. Mind if I come in? I promise I won't get in your way. If you're here to see Ben, I'm afraid you're out of luck. It'll be until this afternoon. Oh, really? What is he, uh, sleeping in this morning? It's his morning off. Excuse me? Let's see. Uh, well, I wasn't looking for Ben anyway. It's your nurse, Lucille, that I need to talk to. She won't be in for at least another 20 minutes. Hmm, well, uh, my first appointment isn't until 10 o'clock. Mind if I wait here for her? Unless you'd prefer that I come back. Suit yourself. You don't like me very much, do you, Dave? I don't dislike you. No? Well, that's not what your vibes are telling me. It's not you I dislike, Dr. Graham. But what do you stand for? That I neither like nor respect. yourself because of evil doers be not envious toward wrongdoers for they will wither quickly like the grass and fade like the green herb trust in the Lord and do good dwell in the land cultivate faithfulness delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart Like yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. The desires of your heart. <laughs> Mom? Yeah? Mom, well, um, I was... Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. Mom, what's, what's the matter? Nothing, nothing. Nothing really important. It's... It's fine, I'm just, uh... Uh... I'm just feeling sorry for myself, that's all. It's nothing, it's just something that I... I thought might work out, and it isn't, that's all. So, how's your arm today? Hmm? Oh, it's okay. I bet it's Jeremy. You and Jeremy, that's why you're sad, isn't it? you might like a cup of coffee. Oh, well, thank you, Mrs. Lucas. Thank you very much. Uh, has my brother been up and around yet this morning? Oh, he was up with the sun this morning. He's already left. Had huh? an early appointment downtown. I see. Um, do you, if you're finished with these papers, I'll get them out of your way. Oh, yes, yes, thank you very much. There you go. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Lucas. You, you didn't have any children, did you? Oh, yes, I had two. But they're uh, grown and living abroad now. Oh. <laughs> you, my wife and I only had the one. Yes, and she's a very sweet young lady, too, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, but sometimes I wonder if she wouldn't have been better off if she'd had a brother or sister or both. Oh, well, I suppose it's hard growing up all by yourself. <laughs> I'm sure she must have been a great joy to you and your wife, though. Ah, she was that. And uh, because she was the only one, I'm afraid we spoiled her. Oh, spoiled. That's what everyone says about only children. Yeah, well, it was true in our case. And now she suffers the consequences of it. The consequences of overprotection. Well, she's still very young, sir. Well, that she is. But then when I think of 
the trouble she's in and how things might have been if I had behaved differently. Oh, don't be so hard on yourself. Courtney's a very bright young lady, bright enough to know where her happiness lies. And one way or another, she'll find it. You mark my words. Well, I hope so. Yeah. If it's going to happen, she's going to have to grow up fast, though. Learn to make her own decisions and take the responsibility for her. I think Courtney has that kind of gumption. <laughs> well, I hope she does, because I am going to remain neutral. I'm going to stay completely out of all of this. Those are noble sentiments, Preston. What? But uh, isn't this neutrality just another cover-up for your true feelings, Preston? I mean, aren't you really hoping that she patches things up with Peter? What on earth are you talking about? What am I talking about? By not taking my side, aren't you taking Peter Davidson's side in all of this? Well, no, I don't see that at all. Oh, really? Well, I do. After all, what's that saying in the Bible? The what? The Bible, Preston. He who isn't for me is against me. Oh. Ah. I received your message this morning, Mr. Myers. Uh, please, Dan. Instead of returning your call, I just decided to come on by. I hope I'm not interrupting. Oh, no, no, no. I'm glad you did. Uh, please, sit down. Thank you. I wasn't expecting to hear from you quite so soon. Could this mean that the annulment's come through already? Oh, no, I'm, I'm afraid not. Uh, no, when you were here before, I didn't really get a chance to explain to you exactly what the procedure is, and um, I wanted to go over that with you. I see. Before I do that, though, I'd like to check again to make sure that it is an annulment that you want rather than a divorce. I thought I made that perfectly clear the last time I was here. Well, I just wanted to be sure that you were fully aware of the implications of this action. Now, your husband is a very wealthy man. And when it comes to light that he went into this marriage keeping from you the fact that he is sexually impotent, uh, there isn't a judge in this country that wouldn't award you a substantial part of his fortune. I neither need nor want any of Von Sumner's money. Do you understand that? And the fact that he would be publicly humiliated when all this comes out after what he's put you through, I mean, that wouldn't give you some satisfaction? All I want is a piece of paper in my hand saying that Von Sumner and I are not married. And in fact, our marriage never legally existed. That's all. I see. Well, um, if you are sure. Then... Yes, I'm sure. As I explained to you before, it's not only for myself that I want this annulment. And it's very, very important. Now, is there anything else that uh, we had to go over? Uh, yes, well, the actual procedure, as I said. Now, the first step is that, as your lawyer, I file suit on your behalf to annul the marriage. We petition the judge to that effect. And how soon can we do that? Oh, that's already been taken care of. The next step is all that needs to be done. That's to serve the papers on Vaughn, informing him that this action is being taken against him. How long will that take? It may have already been taken care of, but in any case, it will be finished today sometime. Today? Hmm. That's an interesting statement, Dr. Phillips. That you don't dislike me, only what I represent. You think so? Yeah, I do. Because it seems to me like we both represent exactly the same thing. We're both fairly successful practitioners of the medical profession. In my book, any physician who makes his living by catering to the wealthy and capitalizing on his patient's insecurities isn't worthy of the name. Yeah, you are entitled to your own point of view. And I'm not the only one in this profession who has that view. <laughs> oh, I don't doubt it. But then again, I'm always amazed at how many physicians are so totally uninformed in any but their own specialty. And for every one that feels like you do, well, I can show you ten that feel that plastic surgery performs a very necessary and valuable service. I have a great deal of respect for plastic surgeons in general. For those who demand exorbitant fees for questionable procedures and unnecessary cosmetic surgery, for those I have little or no respect. I've heard that argument before. Usually from doctors who feel that they and they alone should determine what is unnecessary cosmetic surgery. I think you're making a mistake. If you ever get to the point that uh, your wife wants a face, I were married, which by the way I'm not. I would hope that my wife would have enough respect for herself and me not to even consider such a thing. We're not talking about my wife, are we? I'm referring to the women who come to the Bedford Institute to be pampered and flattered by you and your staff. 
who listen to your recommendations for surgery only because they're, they're bored with their lives or have nothing better to do with their money. You know, you might change your opinion if we came out to the Bedford and took a look at our operation. Meet some of our patients, see the good we're doing. You and everybody connected with the Bedford Institute live in a completely different world than I do, Doctor. Well, frankly, I prefer to keep it that way. Lucille. Oh, Morning. Morning. Dr. Graham wants to see you. Oh. Excuse me. Morning, Lucy. Hi. I was going to call you, but I thought I'd come down and share the good news with you personally. What's that? Well, one of my patients just canceled. So we're going to be able to fit you in sooner than I'd expected. In fact, I have your facelift scheduled for day after tomorrow. <laughs> What's the matter, Lucy? You don't look particularly pleased with my news. Well, it's, you see, I've been thinking... Well, if you're worried about asking for some time off, I'd be glad to talk to Dr. Phillips for no, you. Uh, no, uh, don't do that, okay. Oh. Uh, oh, it's the short notice. Look, if you need some time to work things out, you can let me know later this afternoon. No. Dr. Graham, it's not that. Uh, as a matter of fact, I've changed my mind. Um, I'm not going to go through with it. Changed your mind? About the facelift, I'm, I'm not going to have it. I don't understand. When we met at the Greenbrier, well, you expressed some very intelligent reservations, but you seemed eager to have it done. I did. Uh, but see, I've done some more thinking since then, and it's just, it's just not the right thing for me to do. When did you come to this conclusion, may I ask? Well... I... Lucy, believe me. I would be the last person in the world to try to convince anyone to have this kind of surgery if, if they had even the slightest reservations about it. On the other hand, if you are letting what Dr. Phillips just said influence you, I think you're making a very big mistake. Well, I happen to have a great deal of respect for Dr. Phillips and his opinion. Well, naturally, and of course, he's entitled to his opinion. But I'm afraid that in this instance, his opinion is being based upon prejudice and not fact. Well, when it comes to that, I'd say that you're just as prejudiced in favor of cosmetic surgery as he is against it. Indeed I am, because I've seen all the good that it can do. I've seen all the people that it's helped. I know that. Now, take the children, for instance, with birth defects and deformities that after plastic surgery have been able to go on and lead very normal and productive lives, or criminals whose lives have been rehabilitated after cosmetic surgery corrected physical defects that had forced them to have such a low self-esteem that it drove them into a life of crime. Now, Dr. Phillips conveniently dismisses those cases. I'm hardly in any of those categories. Uh, no, 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 of course you're not. I see you as a very attractive woman. Now remember, you remind me of my own grandmother in her youth. Lucy, you're a woman who enjoys her femininity and takes pride in her attractiveness. And all you want to do is maintain that attractiveness for us as long as you possibly can. Can't argue with that. And that is exactly why I advise you to go ahead with the facelift. It's for the same reason that, that you care about your hair and your makeup and your wardrobe. Because it's all those things that add up to how attractive you feel. I never really looked at it that way. Well, wanting to look your best is nothing to be ashamed of. As a woman, it's your birthright. Yeah. Well, as a woman, it's also my prerogative to change my mind. Then you're going to stand by your decision. Yeah. I want to cancel the surgery. I'm sorry to hear that. You don't think that you're going to change your mind later? No. <laughs> no, it's final. I, I won't change my mind. Well... In that case, I won't take any more of your time. I just want you to know that I think that there is a beautiful woman inside you, a masterpiece. That's just waiting to be released. Mom, 
Do you remember last fall when I said I was afraid to try out for the soccer team? And you said the only thing to be afraid of was not trying. Right, and you overcame all your fears, didn't you? You even made the team. <laughs> I wish you hadn't been afraid yesterday. You're going to miss Jeremy, too, aren't you? Sometimes I used to sit down and dream and wish that you two would get married and we'd go off and... Eric! <laughs> really? Do you really mean that? Are you really serious? I've thought a lot about it. But, honey, if I were to marry again, that would mean some big changes in your life. I know. And you wouldn't mind that. I mean, what if it even meant you might have to move? I wouldn't mind moving, if it meant getting a father. Actually, I think it'd be kind of neat. You really surprise me sometimes. But I certainly didn't think you ever thought of those kind of things. I'm really sorry Jeremy's leaving. You know what? I am, too. But I think you're right. I'm going to tell him so. Yeah, I know you're right, because it's just really foolish to be afraid. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go tell him. I am. <laughs> and then we're just going to see what happens. Vaughn, I'm not going to argue with you anymore on the subject of Courtney. Now, I think I made myself perfectly clear the last time we spoke. Finished! All right. Go on. I went to see your wife yesterday. You went to Fairhaven to see Phyllis. Yes. And I just wanted to say that it's... Well, it's very sad to see her in such a condition. Yeah, her future is not very bright. It was a real shock for me. I mean, it's hard to believe that the woman that was here the, the day Courtney and I were married and the person I met yesterday are one and the same person. Now, the doctor told me that moving her here wouldn't hurt her any, but it sure didn't help either. Is there anything I can do? No, no. I appreciate your offer. But I thought... I know, that... Preston. I know what you're going to say. You thought that Phyllis was just a pawn in my game to win Courtney. Yeah. Well, you're right. She was. But, I mean, after all, she is Courtney's mother. And she's my mother-in-law. And anyone who's in that condition... Yeah, yeah. Did, by the way, did, did you have any luck with Courtney yesterday? No. I wish oh. I did, but she won't listen to anything I say. Well, remember, she's as upset by all of this as you are. It'll take her a while to get over it. You could speed that process along, Preston. Oh, come on now, Preston, Vaughan. please. She respects your opinion, and she loves you. She'll listen to what I you told say. you. I'm not going to get involved. Because you don't want to see this marriage succeed. That's not so. Well, it would be a little easier to believe you, Preston, if I had some support. What is this neutral position? Look, the reason I have taken this position is the same reason that I gave you yesterday. I feel I have manipulated Courtney entirely too much. Now, whatever she decides, she is going to have to make the decision without any interference from me. OK. Okay, if that's what you intend to do, fine, Preston. But let me tell you something. I intend to do everything within my power to win her back. I'm going to see her again today. Well, fine. I wish you luck. Well, thanks. But frankly, luck will have very little to do with it. But I believe that I can show Courtney how much I love her and how much we should be back together again. I believe that. You mean that's... That's all there is to it? Um, as soon as the papers are served, the annulment goes through immediately? Well, that is uh, provided that Vaughn doesn't decide to contest the action. It's just a matter of signing the necessary papers and tying up loose ends. Oh, he, uh, he won't contest. I can guarantee that. Well, if you're right about that, and I, I have no reason to doubt you, uh, that means you will be a free woman in a very, very short time. And looking forward to it. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> Yes, I suspect that there are quite a few young men in this town who will be just as delighted as you are that you're available again. Well, now, I'm not so sure. <laughs> Myself included, if I may say so. Well, thank you, Mr. Myers. Oh, please, can't we make it Dan? All right. Dan? Um, 
You will keep me posted. If there's anything else I need to. Oh, I certainly will, yes. And uh, I hope that when the annulment does come through and you're free again, you let me buy you a drink to celebrate. Well, now, I don't think that's included in your legal fees, and I certainly wouldn't want you making an exception on my part. <sighs> but thank you anyway. Do keep in touch. Oh, I sure will, as soon as I hear anything. There's a project for you, Danny boy. Yes, indeed, Ms. Carpenter, you will definitely be hearing from me again. Excuse me for not waiting to be announced by your secretary, but I just saw my niece leave this office, and I want to know, in fact, I demand to know, just what business you have with Courtney. I don't know what you want me to say, Charles. Tell me what she was doing in this office. What business does Courtney have with you? If Courtney had business here, it was of a legal nature. Now, you know as well as I do th that it would be unethical of me to divulge what went on between now, us. Now, you listen to me, counselor. You were hired as my lawyer long before you ever met Courtney. And you're supposed to represent me in any kind of a fight that might arise between my brother and myself in the matter of securing my seat on the Carpenter Shipping Line Board. That's all very true, Charles, and it's beside the point. It is very much on the point. An annulment of Courtney's marriage to Vaughn might very well trigger a board action against me and in favor of my brother. And you have the gall to stand there and tell me that you're going to help Courtney get an annulment?